Today, I'm going to show you how you can use generative AI tools like Adobe Firefly in order to add and remove elements from virtually any photo like this. You can use it as a background. You can use it for work, just about anything you can imagine. Let's jump right in and I'll show you how it's done. All you're going to need to get started is an image. In my case, I started with just a simple background that I screen captured. Next, you're going to go over to adobe.com slash products slash firefly.html link in the description, and you're going to sign up for a free account. Now, Adobe Firefly is Adobe's answer to all the other stable diffusion or generative AI products that are out on the market, but it has a couple of cool extra tricks. So let's jump in and take a look at those. Click on get Firefly free, and you're going to have a number of different things you can do here. Text to image, text effects, generative fill, generative recolor. So you can actually recolor your images into different styles, text to template, and text to vector graphic. We can cover all these in different tutorials, but today we're just gonna look at generative fill. Go ahead and click on that one. As I said, you need an image to start with. Mine wasn't quite high enough resolution. I think I captured it at 1080p. So I'm also gonna jump over and upscale that using another AI tool. You can simply do a Google search for free AI upscaler. You're gonna come back with a number of different websites that you can try, pixel cut, upscaler, upscale media. Just pick one of those upload your image and go ahead and get that AI upscaled. The higher the resolution you start with, the better it's going to look when you're done. Once you finish that, we're going to jump on back over to Adobe Firefly and we're just going to upload that original image. And you see it's a pretty basic image, not the best quality. We're going to make some changes to it that are hopefully going to help that. So the first thing you'll notice is there are a number of tools over on the left hand side. You'll see pan, remove and insert. Now pan, as you'd expect, just allows you to sort of scroll around. This is great if you have a really massive image. Remove is going to remove elements from your artwork and then insert is going to insert new ones. Let's start with remove though. So what you're going to do is select remove and then you're just going to take this and sort of highlight. Now don't worry about being too precise. You just kind of want to get the gist of it. Go ahead and fill in. We're going to remove this piece of artwork from the wall. It's a uh, furnished apartment so uh, it's not very inspired artwork. Once you're done with that you can come down here and you can go ahead and click the remove button. Now that takes just a minute but you can see that the artwork is completely gone from the wall and it's filled in what looks like the natural wall that was behind it. Now they do give you several different options so you can see the first one selected you can go down to the bottom here and you can sort of select different versions depending on what you notice, you'll notice this middle one sort of has a couple of light streaks because there is a lamp up above there and then this one doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and select the one I like and I'm going to click keep. All right, moving on. The next thing I'm going to do is get rid of this cable over here on my 3D printer. So we're going to go ahead and just again sort of loosely select that. I'm also going to select the edge of this bookcase. I'd like that to be a contiguous wall. I'm going to click remove. I'll wait a minute just again and we'll see what comes back. Just like magic. There's no more cord on the wall. And the last thing I want to remove here is these 3D printer spools that I've got sort of hanging out on the side. So we'll, we'll click keep on that last one, make sure remove is selected, and then we'll go down here and select the 3D printer spools, click remove. Honestly, that looks awesome. It sort of just filled it in with black, but it kept the outline of the stand. And so I'm really happy with that. Now, the cool thing is the more you kind of keep in here that's original, the better it's gonna look because you're gonna get that natural lighting. It's not gonna look so artificial. Now for this next part, we're gonna start doing insert. So I'm gonna select the insert tool and then I'm gonna go over here to this right hand side and you can see where the wall sort of meets our living room. Well, I don't want that there because I'm doing YouTube videos and so I need a better backdrop. We're gonna go ahead and select this entire large area here. You can take just a minute and sort of fill this all in. As I sort of mentioned before, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to sort of interpolate or blur the edges so that everything lines up. Now you can go in and one of the things you'll notice here, you can go to brush settings and you can set the brush size, hardness, opacity. So you can get sort of more fuzzy lines, harder lines, change the brush size to something larger. In this case, I'm fine with what it is. So the other thing you're going to notice down here is this is just like any other text to image prompt you've used with stable diffusion or anything else. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to type a prompt like you would for any other stable diffusion system. I'm going to say modern windows with downtown Lisbon behind them. I'm going to click on generate. 
First one's kind of weird. It's got like a sort of a half window here. It does look good. It has, that's what Portugal looks like. So Lisbon's back there. But then the bottom half, I don't know what's going on there. Kind of wonky. Second one, it's a little better, but not quite natural looking on the left-hand side. This one's pretty good. It looks like there's another room here. There's sort of a dining room table. What you can do, I'm not quite happy with any of those. So we're going to click on more. That's going to generate a fresh set of images. And you can keep doing this and sort of iterate until you get the one you like or you can click cancel and you can do a different prompt. In my case, I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm gonna click on keep. What you can do then is you can still refine this. So if I didn't want this piece down here or maybe some of this other overlapping, I can click on this and sort of have it just do refinements. So you don't have to regenerate the entire image because I'm pretty happy with the top part. I'd like to redo this bottom part. And in this case, this looks much better. So I'm gonna go ahead and click keep for that. Pretty happy there. And the next part we want is something more interesting on the background. We want some sort of something. Let's highlight sort of a big section of the wall here. And we'll just brush this out like normal. This is where setting a larger brush size probably comes in to help a little bit. Go down to the prompt and describe what you want to generate. So we'll say three vertical modern pieces of art. Click on generate. Here's sort of a big abstract painting. Not quite what I was looking for. This is pretty cool. It's got a lot of geometric shapes, colors. And again, it's gonna come back with whatever style you end up putting down in the prompt. And let's say I'm not happy with any of these. I can click cancel and go back to the drawing board. In this case, I'll say saltwater aquarium built into the wall. And we get back some saltwater aquariums that look like they're inset into the back of the wall. It's kind of cool. This one's interesting. I don't know what's going on on the outside edges there. Uh, I don't know what that is at all. But this first one's not too bad. So again, you can kind of go through here and you can iterate and see what makes sense. You could do a bookcase or something else entirely. Now going back to the wall art, what if I wanted three art pieces instead of one? Well, you see this add and subtract. If you click on subtract, you can come back and you can sort of erase sections, or I guess in this case, it would be refill sections of wall that you had previously erased. So we'll go ahead and do a couple of strips here just to sort of fill in the areas that we don't want filled with artwork. And this should give us kind of three nice little sections that the generative AI can fill in. I'm gonna add this up here. This is just a little bit lower than the others. Here, that looks pretty good. So now we'll see, we'll go in and we'll type a new prompt. We'll say abstract modern paintings, click generate. And here we go. Here are a couple of different options. First one, I don't know, this looks a little wonky on the edges. This one's not bad. There's even sort of a shadow being cast upwards. I might go with that. Yeah, I think this middle one looks good. So I'm going to keep that. Now, the cool thing is you can see even the lighting and everything else sort of spills over. So it looks a little bit more natural than it would if you just copied and pasted something into this image or use something like Photoshop without generative fill. Now, of course, you can take this as far as you want. You can iterate on it and really just remove almost anything from any photo. Even if you have a family photo and you have somebody else that photo bombs you, you could easily remove them from the picture. In my case, I use this for YouTube backgrounds, but in your case, you might have some other use. Let me know down in the comments below how you plan to make use of this. And if you have any questions or comments, as always, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI. We'll check you next time. Thanks.